And we're looking forward to seeing more political debates that will enable those who are running for office give us a clear understanding of what they plan to bring to the table because we are tired and we indeed want a change. Now, we have a man who has decided to effect a change in Nigeria by his own actions and by the things that he does. He's gone ahead to establish a foundation, the John Onche Shaibu Foundation, which he has used to touch the lives of many young people around the country. He's also recently written a book titled Unbroken, The Power of the Mind. And today he will share with us his journey, its passion for Nigeria and the young people, and really what next to expect from him. Join me as we introduce engineer John Onche Shaibu. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. It's a pleasure Welcome, having you, sir. Miran. All right, so you retired as head of security from Chevron, but you've gone ahead now to focus on your work, you know, your NGO work. What ticked your passion, really, to start the John Onche Shaibu Foundation? It's a personal journey. I... I was a victim because of my belief and my interpretation. And I decided to say, okay, fine. There are a lot of young men, young girls, that are going through those challenges. How best can I help them? And because I was transformed from a victim to a warrior, I decided to put into a book, then establish a foundation. So when you say your experience, what exactly was this experience? What exactly? were these beliefs that kept you in that place, that, that place at that time? I, my father was a soldier, he died. And uh, we have to move to Benue State, you know, to put my place. Growing up was very challenging. Going through secondary school and university was quite tough. Luckily, I got out and got a job with Chevron. Good place, wonderful company that looked after its employees. Getting that money, Instead of using it and channeling it properly, I wasted it on before, I mean, because I thought that there are enjoyments and illusions that are not real. Before I could recover from that, it was a bit challenging. And I met a lot of people too that I said, okay, fine. What can I do to help those that are in the same lane that I am? Especially sons and daughters of dead military men, soldiers, Air Force, the Army. And uh, what can I do to help them? My colleagues that are still suffering from the same illusion, what do I drop to help them? And I started from doing that, and it's been so amazing. Wow, that's, that's really impressive. You've taken something that was a personal experience to you, and you've decided to give back to other people so that they don't have to walk the same journey that you worked. Absolutely. Let's look at, um, the, you, you've worked with young people. The John, Shibu, the John O'Shea Shaibu Foundation works with young people. I worked with lots of young people. Now, in the course of your work you know, and giving back, what would you say are some of the most challenges that you've seen that young people in Nigeria face? It's interpretation. You know, as human, we, we have energy, which is within. And if that energy is not properly channeled, the outcome will be very, very challenging, it's going to be negative. And the first thing to start is awareness. Do we know who we are? Do we know the journey they are in? And most of the time, 99% of the time, instead of searching for opportunities and utilizing the, the, the chances that we've got, we look for challenges. We look for crisis. And that will not help us in any way. So what I try to do, in essence, is I use my personal experience, put it into a book, talk about it, Try to channel the youth's mindset to focus on possibilities. And that comes from harnessing your internal energy to use for positive growth. So for how long have you been doing this? And also, since you started, how many people have actually been affected positively by you know, your vision, your foundation, since inception till now? Huge, huge. We've organized a lot of seminars, workshop, entrepreneurship program, focusing on delivering to the youth. And they are all documented, and most of the time we get a lot of feedback. And from the book, too, it's been amazing. Speaking of the book, you recently authored and launched a book. Congratulations on that. And you also premiered a short movie surrounding the scenarios and the incidents surrounding your book. Now, I've been privileged to read through your book. And there's a major theme of love. 
love and you know love that focuses not just love between husband and wife you seem to be so passionate about love being the guiding force of our lives why is that so there are two forces that sponsor our thought and our action either fear or love but love is encompassing love is empathy it's the totality of who we are but fear is corrosive and is full of illusions that are not true you need to have the awareness that, okay, fine, there are two dichotomies. Either you love or you are being sponsored, your thoughts and your actions sponsored by fear. I try to focus on the love aspect of it and say, okay, with love you can conquer all things. And it's been amazing because it's a lot of mind dynamic, you know, thought that you need to be settled. You need to have a mindset that is devoid of judgment. The major issue we have right now is judgment. People judge a lot. You don't know my story. How do you judge me? But if you love me, you can help me. If you love, you can't judge. But if you are controlled by fear, then you can judge people. Then you interpret the action wrongly then you can, don't have empathy. How do we now get to this place of love that you speak of so often? Because, you know, we find that sometimes, in all honesty, it's not really easy. People hurt you, people manipulate you, people take advantage of you. But you're basically telling us that love is the opposite of fear. In this instance, you're either controlled by love or you're controlled by fear. How do we as individuals get to the point where even when people treat us badly, we're still able to respond in love? Even when things don't go our way, we still have an underlying drive, and that is love. You know, if you look at the way, I mean, the, the thought process that we as women are born with, you realize the fact that the dichotomy between love and fear controls us. Unfortunately, our domestication, I'm talking about we, Nigeria, me from Otoko in Benue State, is focused on fear. Don't do this. A child don't eat egg, don't eat meat. But a child needs meat and needs egg. But it's the opposite that they tell a child. If you look at our growth process, between the age of 6 to 12, we are all controlled, driven, and directed by fear. When you become an adult, you find out that this lifestyle, the thinking process still controls you, but it's not helping you. But if you love, you find peace. If you love, you can empathize. If you love, you can give. If you love, the, the, your body water content in terms of acidity and alkalinity, it will be much more alkaline, which means disease cannot survive in an alkaline state of body fluid. And you realize that with that, you attract more people to help you. But if you judge, that means you are fearful, you are negative, and a lot of people will not be trying or we try not to relate with you in any way. So it's from experience you realize that fear destroy, but love grows. Okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to ask this question. I, I see that you're a motivational speaker also. Yeah. And you have a lot of dealings with young people. And I would imagine that you've met a lot of young people that have had to relate their issues, you know, to you. Do you do mentorship also? Yeah, I do that. You know, one of the challenges we found with the youth is the fact that in the course of mentoring them, you find out that the structure of their belief is controlled by fear, and they don't have a way out. So the easiest thing is to, okay, push this fear to the background, they start taking drugs. Pushing it back, but it doesn't make it go. So but, just suppressing it. Yeah, they are suppressing it. So I try to encourage them, you need to confront it and tell yourself the truth. Well, I had this upbringing, I had this interaction, I had this disappointment that that does not define me. I want to define myself. In doing that, quite a number of them that come to embrace that truth, they're connected with what we are teaching. And I tell you that it's been very, very positive and encouraging. Okay. A, lot, a lot have gone back to school, into trading, setting up many businesses, and it's been so wonderful. That's great. That's your, great. your book, basically, from what I, I see, is that um, people who are... Um, not just young people, even businesses and entrepreneurs and all of them can 
you know, it's something that there's always a lesson to learn. How long did you take it to write that book, if I may ask? Six years. Wow. Interesting. Six good years. Yeah, I, I had to. Years. Yeah, six long years. I had, it's my personal experience, interaction with friends, with people that have gone through challenges in the course of my working in Chevron and private businesses, and also family contacts too. And I realized that we all have the same challenges, fear and judgment. If we can deal with that and see the next person, the next person are the same as us and avoid judgment, you find out that you'll be able to grow and be able to harness the energy that we can all coordinate with and move on. There's so much that we know that is in this mind of yours, so much that we can tap from. But I know you have an avenue by which you mentor young people and you give them information. So for those who want to reach out to the John Scheibo Che Foundation or who want to follow you on social media, how can they do that? Or those who want to get your book as well? Yeah, we have a, a website called uh, www.johnshibo.com. You go in there, all the information is there. Do the social media handle and uh, you can connect to us. The phone numbers are there. And we have helpline all over the Federation. People are there to contact us. And uh, we try to bring the, be the help, I mean, be the best we can be. For the helplines are for which people in particular? They have the youth section, they have the adult section, and relationship section. Okay. Which we try to, we have also some, I mean, some group, I mean, sets, uh, some cell sets that has to do with little micro number of people where you can share information so that it stayed within the group. We provide help, get professionals like money to come in and help, and also some doctors that are voluntarily. I think this us, is yeah. absolutely fantastic. fantastic. The work that you do, thank you so much. You can visit the website www.johnshaibufoundation.com. You know, you can Google him. Of course, all the information will pop up, and follow him on social media at Today with John Shaibu. If you either need help, the helplines are open to you for free, or if you want to get the book on Broken, or you want to be a volunteer for the John Shaibu Foundation. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.